Hi everyone, and welcome to today's live session. I'm Will, I'm the Customer Experience Manager here at Fastos, and with me I have Anurag, who's our PPC guru, and I've got Tom, uh, who's our Customer Engagement Specialist over there, doing the technical side of things. Uh, today we're talking about pay-per-click marketing. Um, this session is aimed at beginners who don't really have any kind of experience with PPC, um, or you kind of got a bit of experience and you kind of just want to get a little bit more efficient with your budgets. Um, should give you a good basic understanding and give you a bit of a platform if you kind of want to research the research the topic a little bit further. Um, it's worth noting we're not really talking about social media PPC in this. It's more going to be based on search engines because um, the strategies are quite different. Um, and there's plenty to talk about just in the uh, in the search search engines. Um, so we're going to be take, be about 40 minutes today i think somewhere around there depending on how many questions we get and on the note of questions if you've got any questions as we're going along please feel free to ask we'll do our best to kind of answer them as and when we can within the content and we'll be doing a q a session at the end so if you've got any kind of more generic questions we'll we'll answer those at the end um, and we'll stick around to all of those are answered so ask away in the youtube chat function um so i've got a, i'll be keeping an eye on that so any questions i will uh, Give, a, give you an answer there. Also worth noting, there's a little bit of stream delay as with all streams. So if you do ask a question, um, we won't be, you'll see us answer it kind of maybe 30 seconds or a minute later, um, just because there is a little bit of a delay on there. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So let's have a look at the content we'll be covering today. So first off, we'll start with the basic, what is PPC? Then we're going to have a look at the different types of campaigns. And before I move on, I will say there are some, probably some terminology on this slide that don't really make a huge amount of sense at this moment in time, but we'll explain as we go along. So don't worry too much about that. Um, we'll look at what are search campaigns, the hierarchy of search campaigns, the campaign setup. Uh, we'll look at keywords, kind of important. Keyword match types, again, really important. Um, RSAs, I can't remember what RSA stands for. Responsive search ads. That's the one, responsive search ads. And how to write engaging ad copy. Uh, we'll take a look at ad extensions and assets, how you can actually measure success in making sure you're not spending more money than you're making, because that's uh, an easy trap to fall into. And then, like I say, we'll take some questions at the end. So with that, I will pass you over to our expert, Anurag. Thank you, Bill. So, um, so as Will mentioned, we'll start right from the basic. And uh, the first thing a lot of people may not know is what is PPC? So PPC is an abbreviation for pay-per-click. Uh, but what does it mean is that uh, it's a mode of advertising where an advertiser will only pay when their ad is getting clicked on. There are other modes where um, you pay for the impression, but that's usually not really followed. Most of the advertisers like to pay for click. So in real world, in practical world, if a, if a user searches any search term, your ad gets triggered. Um, if the user does not click on the ad, you will not pay anything. Uh, it's completely free exposure from Google, and you will only get charged when a, when a user is clicking on your ad. And we will cover in a minute later in the slide or the, or the, or the session that how does the clicks thing work, this cost works. But uh, for now, the basic is that a user will click on your ad and that's how you will make a payment to Google. Uh, so where does PPC ads appear? So they appear on uh, search engine pages like Google and Microsoft advertising. When a user searches for a query, uh, you will usually see on Google uh, eight ads, eight paid listing ads. They could be... Um, referred as or listed under uh, sponsored or ads, they change it, but there will be something to clearly uh, communicate that uh, that listing is a, is a paid advertising or a sponsored listing. Um, generally, um, PPC would uh, ad would have uh, two or three headlines, one or two description and a few site links. We'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, and uh, how does PPC work? So PPC massively relies on uh, keywords. So uh, an advertiser, you will select or target a bunch of keywords which you want to show your ad on. And when a user is searching a query or a search term mm -hmm. um, on Google, and uh, if that search term is eligible to trigger your ad, your ad will get triggered. Where your ad will get triggered, what position, that depends on every auction. We talk about that in a minute as well. But uh, this is mainly how it works. Um, 
There are various forms of PPC ads. So the most common one is search ads, which is also called a text ads, which is basically, as I said, um, just a bunch of headlines and description and some other text that search ads. Second is um, uh, display ads. Now display ads are quite interesting because uh, they they have for the two categories. First is a static image, where uh, a static image is shown to an to a user. But that just to specify here, the display ads are not on Google search engine as it is. Display ads usually are on partner sites like across other websites, the internet. Mm -hmm. And if you are doing a video display ad, then it's primarily on YouTube. YouTube ads are. Uh, various type of YouTube ads are uh, a type of display campaign. Um, third is shopping ads, also known as product listing ads. These are basically um, um, when these are first of all only relevant when an advertiser is selling a physical product. You can't sell a service via a shopping ad. So a shopping ad is basically when a user searches for a product, let's say shoes, and if you guys may have noticed that. Um, when you search something like that, the, the top of Google, there are listing or arranged in a horizontal uh, line where basically there's a small image, price, and some description. Those are the shopping ads. And uh, lastly, um, um, there's so the other type of ads called demand generation. We talk about that in a minute. Um, in terms of the budget, so Google ads is historically the most customizable advertising platform or mode of advertising there. You can set everything. You can set your budget. If you want to spend a penny a day, you can spend a penny a day if it's practically possible, which I doubt. And second is um, you can spend up to million, up to, I think there's no limit. You can spend million, 10 million, billion, whatever. Yeah, I don't think Google put a limit on it. No, I definitely, <laughs> not. definitely not. But, uh, but yeah, but but it's basically, and if there is any limit, it's a ridiculous amount. I do not know. I have never come across with any limit where it says that, oh, you cannot spend more than X, Y, Z. I doubt it. So yeah, and, uh, and another good part is that you customize your budget. The budget is set for daily basis. So if you set a budget, let's say 100 pounds, the campaign would spend 100 pounds per calendar day. It can vary a little bit, 15, 20% up and down. Uh, that's the part of it. But uh, it will most likely will stay around 100 mark or whatever your budget you set. If your budget is exhausted for any reason, uh, if it's spent or or something else, then um, your ads will pause for that day. And as the new calendar day will start, your ads will resume. Now, if you notice that your ads are... Uh, or budget is exhausted, you still have got time left and you want to keep showing your ad, then you can always increase the budget or decrease it whenever you want. So as I said, it's highly, highly customizable and this is what it is. So it, it lets you customize everything. It's a, generally regarded as a very efficient way to yes. use your marketing budget exactly. because yeah. there's that famous quote and I probably butcher it now about knowing half of your half of your marketing budget is ex extremely successful but it's knowing which half it is that was successful <laughs> yeah, with but, traditional uh, yeah, traditional advertising exactly. terms. if we compare with with traditional advertising uh, well for example um, you run an ad on tv you do not know how many yeah. people have watched it how many people have taken action after yep. watching your ad but with google ads we can measure all of that Everything. and 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 that's the reason it it is historic according to some experts in the history of mankind, the most successful advertising mode out there, even today. So yeah, so let's move forward and see uh, what else we got for you. Let's take a look at yeah. one of the examples. Yeah, so here's an example of a PPC search ad. Uh, as I said, uh, this is one of our own ads, and uh, I think this is a very beautiful ad, very well written. <laughs> Not blowing our own trumpet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, we, I think uh, this ad has been rated excellent by Google. So uh, they have vouched for our ad quality. So okay. I'm confident. Yeah, so one quick point here that every uh, ad you write, RSA, uh, Google will give a rating. Uh, starts from poor, good, average. And excellent or poor, average, good, excellent. Maybe not that order, but um, it will tell you how good your ad is. And obviously, if your ad is not excellent, then uh, they will give you suggestion of what you can include in your ad to make it excellent. As an ad advertiser, you always want to have your ad to be all the ads to be excellent. Yeah, obviously, because uh, that's what you want. So in this example, particularly, we can see that uh, first of all, uh, this an example user has searched fast host and our ad has appeared it's uh, marked under sponsor so that clearly communicates that this is a ppc ad it's a sponsored ad it's not an organic listing and then then there's a small logo of our business and the name of the business with a with a display url uh, display url basically shows a user where what website they're going on they could have other mm -hmm. stuff after the uh, domain name but in this example because it's a homepage 
um, campaign or it's a, it's a brand campaign. Therefore, it's going on on our homepage. And after that, uh, there are two descriptions, sorry, two headlines we can see. Um, the first is fast host, host, build and scale. And then we see a hyphen. So hyphen here is, uh, um, is communicating that uh, there's a second headline starting. And then second headlines, domain websites, and dot, dot, dot. So as an advertiser, you want to give all three headlines to Google or, or as many as possible now in the world of RSAs, but that doesn't guarantee all of them will be visible all the time. No. Um, Sometimes they will be visible three, sometimes they will be visible two, sometimes there could be only one. But if you don't see them, do not panic. They will be shown to some users. It's all random. This is all Google does their magic behind the curtain that they, this is keep on going. So do not worry about it. From an advertiser perspective, you want to give as many as possible, up to 15 in the world of RSAs. Then we have description. We can say that two description and then further extension site links. Um, so that basically... Um, I personally find this ad very good because it is communicating everything. <laughs> it is a great example, I yes, believe. Yes, you wrote this one. Uh, I did not write this oh, one. Oh, did you not? No, actually, no. Okay. We, have, we have experts who write uh, ad copies. I'm not that good, unfortunately, in writing ad copies. Therefore, okay. I take the help. Okay. We have experts okay. to do that. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah. This, is, this ad shows, communicates an uh, incredible amount of information to a user. It tells what the fast host is all about, what we offer. And if they want to go any particular services we offer, they can click on any of the site links which are visible and land directly on. So that's a very, very uh, precise example. Right. So we earlier touched about type of campaigns. Let's talk about them in a bit more detail. So first is search campaign. As I said, they're also called... Uh, uh, text campaigns sometime, but the new new terminology is search campaigns. So search campaigns is, as I said, most popular type of campaigns. Um, they are on Google and they're showing uh, some text ads as we just saw an example, bunch of keywords. We talk about the keywords in a minute. Second is a display campaign where um, visual ads, banners and uh, videos. So very interesting example here. Um, some of you might be able to relate. So if you go on a website, look for some product, you might you might see that those pictures of those product are following you across the internet wherever you go. That is unfortunately a type of display campaign. Yeah. Uh, so where basically um, it's 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 a passive brand building. It's a great way to passively brand build. Uh, even if you do not do uh, product retargeting, uh, you can have a normal generic ad just talking about your business or your brand, and that's a great way to um, to passively brand uh, passively do the brand building and also generate clicks and and conversions. Uh, the video campaigns, video campaigns again, as I said, YouTube campaigns. So all the ads which you see on YouTube. Uh, are all under video campaigns, capable, unscapable, and all of that. So that there are multiple type of YouTube ads as well. Uh, third is shopping campaigns. As I earlier said, it's relevant for an e-commerce business where they're selling a physical product. Uh, as you only do can uh, advertise physical products via shopping campaigns, and uh, it's a small picture coming under the under the search bar with information, prices, and some rating. And excuse me. And lastly, demand generation. So demand generation is uh, used, first of all, used to call discovery campaign. If any of you have used or have heard that term, uh, Android users may be able to um, relate here. So wh when you use your Android phone under your Google Now feed, you will see one or two listings which are sponsored. Those are basically um, demand generation campaigns. The whole purpose of demand generation campaign is, again, passive brand building. When a user is uh, looking at their Google feed, interacting with the listings, they can see your ad, and if they find it relevant, they can click. If not, then they can just see it, and that actively, uh, that passively builds a brand f uh, for them, uh, for you, for in them in the brain. So when they're actually looking for product or service which is relevant f for your business uh, you offer, it, it has been found in the search that they would uh, search for your brand name or they would interact with your ad if they have already seen your ad or interacted with your ad previously. So I think that's, I guess this is off script now, I know. Um, there's quite an interesting point about that is that I think with more traditional advertising methods, it's easier to build a bit of that brand, sort of that brand awareness. So for yeah. example, if you're advertising on in magazines, radio, mm -hmm. TV, all of that sort of stuff, people who aren't interested in your product and who wouldn't be searching for your product still see your brand and yeah. are still aware of your brand. I guess that demand gen is kind of, kind of bridging that gap a little bit. It is indeed, it is, Phil. But the difference is that advertising on any of the traditional media, TV, magazine, newspapers is very expensive. Yes, of It course, doesn't cost yeah. any, it probably costs fractions of fractions of what it costs there. So so you can start very small, for exa example, having an ad on a big magazine or newspaper, probably talking about 15 or 20 or whatever, yeah. I don't even know. 
Uh, but on this, you can probably start with a few pennies if it's possible. Yeah. So it's very cheap and you can control the budget. You don't have a big budget. Yeah, and that's, no, that's the beauty of uh, PPC. It's just an interesting thing about brand awareness. It's yeah. not really considered before. I guess I haven't been listening to you much beforehand, I guess. <laughs> so, as I think Will mentioned earlier, we're going to primarily focus our session today on search campaigns. Uh, why? Because... Uh, First of all, search campaigns are, as I said, most popular and search campaigns are the most complicated type of campaigns. I personally believe that some people may differ, but uh, I believe if you have understood the search campaigns, understanding other type of campaigns would be fairly easier. So we go with the most complicated part. So as we said, now what are search campaigns? So they are the most old. So when Google started back in 90s, the first advertising they came up with was a search campaign. It was different back then what it is today. It has evolved, adapted quite a bit since then. Google has been around for nearly 30 years, if not longer. So uh, yeah, so it has adapted quite a bit over time as people are, the search patterns are changing. Mobile search wasn't, wasn't existed back then uh, because smartphones were not there or were very, very small penetration. Now the search on mobile is very big. So they have adapted according to that. Mobile phones have gone bigger so they have got more space all of that so they, in short they have adapted and evolved as we have as a race um, now search campaigns as i previously mentioned revolve around keyword targeting and as an advertiser you, advertiser you will select a certain bunch of keywords you want to target relevant to your product or service and relevant to what your user may be searching for but remember bear in mind that uh, if your what you offer uh, as, a, as a business could be different how uh, your customers may perceive it. They may search for your service or similar service in a different ways. So as an advertiser, you have to think from a customer's perspective that what they might be searching on Google to add to to find out or to to find the, the product or services they're looking for. So so you have to always think from their point of view that you have you're targeting those terms what a user might be searching for. Because if you have ta keywords which nobody's searching for there's no point of obviously having the campaign because nobody's going to see and interact with them. Um, as I previously said, uh, search usually, the ad usually appears on, on top and the bottom of the search page, four at the bot four at the top, four at the bottom. There used to be 10 ads on each page, but Google changed it to, to eight few years ago. Now with, uh, with mobile search, there's not a page. You keep on scrolling, the ads keep on appearing. So they're more now integrated within uh, the standard organic listing, but they're always listed by uh, marked under a sponsor. So so user clearly knows they are uh, a PPC ad. Um, ad copies. So as an advertiser, obviously, uh, the only part of your campaign which a user or your potential customer is going to interact with is an ad copy. So you want to make sure that uh, your ad copy is relevant and uh, and an ad copy generally have, as we had earlier discussed, a bunch of headline, description, a display URL, and a bunch of uh, uh, extensions to give them further information. We talk about an ad copy is more detailed for the down in the presentation, but uh, but they are just general description of how an ad copy looks like. Next slide, please, Tom. Come on, Tom, one job, mate. Thank you. So this is another example of search ad. Pretty similar to previous one, slight different. We can see that here we have again, uh, I think that presentation was prepared by Tom. Tom has done a stellar job, first thing. And you can see the example here is uh, it's brilliant that he searched for our brand name and you can see that our ad has appeared. This time, the second description, sorry, second headline is fully visible. As I mentioned earlier, it can vary. So it is this time here, second description is fully visible and two headlines are visible as well and the extensions. Now, one thing I want to quickly point out here that um, there is no... A strict rule of what what extension or what description would appear. Uh, they can appear in any random order, uh, and that's the beauty of RSA. But we talk about that in a minute. I've said it before as well. <laughs> we talk about it, I promise. But um, but yeah, if you see an extension right now, doesn't mean you will see that again next time. They they randomly appear. You therefore, as an advertiser, you wanna give as many as possible. Make sure they are relevant, so a user or a Google has multiple combinations to show to identify the winning one. It's always interesting that we're luckily top of the search results when you search for fastest. However, mm -hmm. it always cracks me up when you like well, sometimes when you search for a brand and like one of the direct competitors yeah. is the top one. I bet if you search for Pepsi, I bet Coke is the top. Yeah, that, that, that is, is annoying when that, that happens. That happens. There always uh, there's a lot of fight 
a lot of battle. It's actually kind of virtual battleground. It's a battleground. Yeah, and uh, and all the advertisers are fighting because the attention of users are really precious and they're really expensive, depending on the industry. So, advertiser is always trying to get maximum value for their money. And and this is this is the beauty of PPC really that uh, it's it's fair ground for everyone, um, it's a fair rules and it's a fair platform. So whoever does it best actually winning the race, fittest, fittest of the or survival of the fittest basically, as sometimes it's referred. So it's really really fair. Although <laughs> we talked a little bit about bidding, is that I guess sometimes it's hard to come up against someone who's got a massive budget, right? Because yes. that's how the bidding works. I don't know if we really talked about it all that much. Yes, that is right. Um, so yeah, I mean, if if um, budget is a very big part, obviously, because um, you need to have money to able to show you, to click, click your ads. If your if your budget is exhausted, your ads will not be shown. Some, so earlier I said that a user. An advertiser will only pay when a user clicks on ad, but please bear in mind, if your budget is exhausted, then your ad will stop showing because if if an ad is shown and user clicks on it, Google cannot charge you more than its budget, so they stop showing the ad. So please do not assume that if your budget is exhausted, your ad will keep on showing. It doesn't work this way. Yes, I, I, we probably come on to this. I'm probably jumping ahead. But yeah, that bidding works. So mm -hmm. say, for example, like you'll say, we pay we pay we could pay up to a hundred pound per click for mm -hmm. for that particular ad that we show why am i pointing you can't see but you pay a hundred pound you you bid that you might not necessarily pay a hundred pound but it no. depends on what other people are bidding on that particular yes. keyword right so and right. some of them are horrifically expensive right yes yes um yeah so so answering tom's question sorry will's question yes so uh, even if you have max cpc of let's say 100 pounds for your keyword that doesn't mean you will pay 100 pounds uh, you will only pay 1p more than your than your nearest competitor so let's just say for the sake of example if your nearest competitor is bidding 50 pounds your bid is 50, uh, 100 pounds you will pay 50 pounds 1 pence in theory uh, this is how it works so but uh, but the higher the bid is the likelihood for you to be shown the ad and being higher is higher yeah that's how it works and uh, yes, um, big budgets. If you have a competitor who's who have got big budgets pumping on your business, on your on your brand names, it's very tricky to fight that situation. Uh, legitimately, the only thing you can do is just uh, outbid them by putting more money in. Unfortunately, you don't have any option unless you are able to make um, some arrangement or, or, or yeah. agreement with them uh, but that's that's definitely uh, that's against the TOS I think isn't it exactly that's that's not <laughs> fully legal in Google Google yeah. eyes but uh, but yeah but there are other opportunities but but legally the only option you have is to outbid them yeah, unless sure. uh, you want to want to let them have it I suppose then at that point it becomes a return on the investment yeah, that, which is why it's important to make sure the ad copy is good so you don't get clicks that aren't relevant exactly. and Oh, exactly. it's a, it's but but be, exactly. Time. But before before everyone get excited and think that oh they can start jumping on their competitors and steal their traffic, please bear in mind, competitor bidding is always very expensive. Yeah. So yeah. So if you are paying, let's say one pound for your brand name cost per click, your competitor brand name is not going to be one. It's going to be significantly higher. How much I do not know, but it will be higher. So bear in mind that it does come with the cost. And also, I guess this is also relevant, is what is the point of bidding on a competitor? Because if they're searching for your competitor, they're mm -hmm. specifically looking. So then their, their intent is to go to that competitor. Exactly. So they're yeah. highly unlikely to go to yeah. you and then you've just wasted all that money Absolutely, on, on yeah. a click. So yeah. Spot on, yeah. Was Will said that's correct that um, even if you spend on it, people might click on your ad, they will come on the website, they say, no, that's something I'm not looking for. I want to go back to the brand I was searching for. And a lot of times when people are searching for the brand name, they are existing customers. So they want to interact with the, with the, with the they want to do something with their user account or something. So that's just wasted click. Yeah. So you want to be really careful when you do competitor bidding. Sorry, keep interrupting you. I'm learning too. I'm learning too. No, it's very really interesting. I'm like, I'm enjoying it. Okay, so um, campaign hierarchy. Um, this is um, quite interesting because um, how the campaign works. We talked in theory how the campaign works, keyword ad copies and, and campaign ad group, etc. But this is the actual hierarchy. So first thing is that how Google Ads work. You need to sign up with Google Ads. If you just um, search Google Ads on Google, you will easily find the website. You will need to sign up with Google. If you already have a Google account, Gmail or something, you can use the same email address to sign up with Google Ads. You don't have to have another email address. That's the beauty of a within Google ecosystem that you don't need multiple login IDs. One would work. Uh, you sign up with a Google Ads account. You give them all your details, whatever they ask for, payment details, etc. And then you start setting up campaign. So as in hierarchy, we can see here the chart flow chart basically that the account will have a campaign or multiple campaigns. Each campaign would could have multiple ad groups. 
the limit of having a uh, number of ad groups, I think ridiculous, like 10,000. So you can have as many as you want, up to 10,000, if I'm not mistaken, but it's really high limit. And each ad group would contain keywords and ad copies and landing pages. So the, so the reason how it works, is the way it works is that uh, the bunch of keywords, the number of keywords you have within an ad group, if that keyword is triggering an ad, the ad which belongs to that ad group only that ad would be triggered. So not like, for example, in this case, we have got ad group one, ad group two. If you have got a keyword which is triggering an ad belongs to ad group one, your ad will not be shown from ad group two. It will be shown from the ads sitting under ad group one. And so is the landing page. So landing page is when a user clicks on it, the, the land the, web, the page will land on. So you want to make sure that, um, first of all, is relevant. But the landing page, the point here is basically uh, the landing page, whichever landing page an ad copy belongs to uh, an ad group, that only uh, ad copy and landing page will be triggered when when a user is uh, seeing the ad belonging to that particular ad group. Does it make sense? Though? It does. I think this sort of stuff is really, like if once you start doing it, it makes a lot more sense. It's really, it's kind of, you kind of have to just do it and work it out. But you can set all this up without having any, without spending any money anyway. Absolutely. Right? So. And also, um, if you have set something up today and you're not uh, happy with it tomorrow, you can always pause it. Always pause it or remove it uh, and reset up again within the same uh, within the same account. Although I would not recommend doing this again and again because you want your campaign or keywords to collect the data. So when you do select or set up an, a campaign structure, make sure you think it through and uh, try not to fiddle around with it very often because um, then you will lose the data. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult to, if you're always constantly changing, yeah, you don't know what exactly. works and what doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. How I see the campaign structure is that is that putting a foundation to a building, that you put the foundation of a building once, once the building has been standing, you can't fiddle around with the foundation. Yeah. So you want to make sure that the foundation is strong and give proper attention and detail to the foundation of the campaigns or account. Yeah, we did toy with setting up an account and showing you, but it's quite, it would have taken like 20 minutes just, yeah, to, just exactly. to do that. And it, there's so much documentation on actually setting all this stuff up out there, but we just wanted to give you a better understanding of how it works and the basics. So you exactly. can give you the tools to go and understand what you're actually researching, basically. And for small advertisers, they can pay via a debit or credit card. So they don't have to be invoiced. So you can uh, top up add credit in your account and then Google will use that credit to run the ads. If the credit runs out, they can automatically charge your added card. If you don't want them to do that, I think that's an option. You just say that, uh, no, I don't want to do that. Then that means every time you actively will have to add credit in your account. Otherwise, your ad would stop as soon as the credit is exhausted. For big advertisers, uh, you can work on invoices. Then Google can invoice you. But for that, the threshold is very high, like, like I think a few hundred thousand a month to spend and before Google considers you on going on invoice mode. So for small advertisers, paying via pay as you go, adding credit by debit or credit card is the most efficient way. Can't accidentally spend a, spend a few thousand bucks and then, right? Right. So, so we talked about the hierarchy of the campaign or the account. Now let's talk about the real uh, setup. How do we do that? So it's a multiple step process. Uh, it looks the list may look a bit intimidating, but it's not. It's just one step at a time, and uh, and then we, we go through with this every step with you guys now. But um, it's 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 very 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 uh, effective and also not that intimidating as it may look like. So first thing is that you need to identify your goals, that what you are looking to achieve from your PPC advertising. If you want sales, if you want leads, if you want views for a video, or you just want traffic or brand awareness to your website. Based on the goal, you will select the type of campaign, the ones we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to sell a physical product, then shopping campaign is the most relevant. Please bear in mind that for a physical product, search campaign can also be ran. However, they're not as relevant. However, they're not as effective or, or or successful as a shopping campaign. And that's yeah. the reason Google came up with shopping campaigns because uh, uh, for physical products, it's difficult to really see, a uh, customer want to see the product yeah. before they click the ad because advertisers were complaining that they are getting a lot of clicks, getting charged, but not getting sales. And they come up with it. So they do hear the feedback of advertisers very seriously and they do implement stuff. So it's not like if something doesn't exist today, will never exist. Uh, as an advertiser, you can always leave your feedback and they will action it. They, they hopefully will actually depending on the demand and stuff other things. So yeah, so first is um, define your objectives. Second is um, type of campaign. So as we discussed, there are three or four type of campaigns. You select search, display, shopping, depending on your objective of the campaign. 
Third is the budget. So you have to uh, first come up with a budget, how much you want to spend. Please bear in mind that budget has to be realistic. I gave an example that you can have a 1P as a budget. In theory, that is possible. But realistically, 1P a budget a day will not get you anywhere, Depend because I don't think there's any keyword exists. I have personally, I've been doing PPC for like 10 years, and I've never really come across with any keyword which has a bit of 1P. I feel like smack your keyboard and just have a, like a bunch of random letters. That <laughs> probably would do it, I reckon. Yeah, but if somebody's not searching for that. <laughs> <laughs> Still a penny. It's a penny. Still a penny That's yeah. about the only time you're ever going to get a penny bit, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So your budget has to be realistic, depending on how much is the cost per click, uh, estimated cost per click for the keywords you're going for. Uh, you have to then select budget accordingly. As I previously said, you can always customize the budget. What I would recommend is to start with slightly higher budget to collect the data. Uh, maybe if you're looking to spend, let's say, hundred pounds a day, maybe start with 115, 120, or something like that, uh, if you can. And let your let your uh, campaigns collect the data, and um, and then uh, optimize accordingly. So select your budget. And the second part is bid strategy. Now bid strategy is a very big uh, topic within PPC community across the world right now, because back in the days when uh, when PPC existed 10, 15 years ago, um, it used to be manual bidding. Now now in the days you know AI. Manual bidding has taken the back step and now it's automated bidding. So automated bidding is basically you trust Google that you want Google to, you tell Google what your goal of the campaign is, how much you want to pay for that goal and Google will do the heavy lifting for you. Now, um, however, there's a caveat. If you're starting fresh, I would always recommend to start with the manual bidding because manual bidding will generate the data quicker and then once you are comfortable excuse me, with the performance of your campaign, you can switch to automated bidding and vice versa. You can always change the strategy whenever you want, but you have to uh, really careful before choosing strategy. Do not play around with the strategy that you have a manual bidding today, tomorrow, automated bidding, day after tomorrow, manual bidding back on. This back and forth will just uh, haywire everything. So you want to make sure that um, that um, you give certain, when you do select a strategy, you give it a certain time, at least 30, 40 days before you make a decision. So, so please bear in mind that uh, Whatever strategy you go with, it has to be think through again. I'm, I'm really giving a lot of emphasis on, on thinking through beforehand because uh, all of these things make a difference from day one in the performance of your campaign. So you want to make sure that you are giving the best possible opportunities for your campaign to perform as you want them to. Um, touching upon a little bit more on bidding strategy. So bidding, there are multiple type of bidding strategies that exist today, Will. First is the manual bidding where you do all the bidding, you manage everything, select the bids, optimize um, modifiers, et cetera. Second is uh, uh, TCPA, which is basically target cost per acquisition. Then there is uh, impression share, a few other there. All of them are really uh, self-descriptive. So if you do set up the campaign, you want to explore them. When you select them, there's a description appears within Google Ads interface. You can absolutely and un easily understand what the bid strategy does for you. So as I said previously, um, that I would recommend to start with manual bidding. And today we will focus on manual bidding more because manual bidding is the hardest. And once you have understood it, then uh, the automated bidding will not be that difficult. Next step in the journey is keyword research and selection. So how do you find out what users are searching for or what keywords are relevant for your campaign? So within Google Ads platform, there's an option called tools. It sometimes appears on the top right, sometimes appears on the left side, depending on the interface you're looking at. Under tools, there is um, one option called Keyword Planner. Now, this is basically, Google keeps a record of majority, if not all the search term being searched on their platform every day. So the, uh, billions of searches Google are recording what people are searching for. And if you will go into Google Keyword Planner, select your right settings, i.e. location, time, what you want to look the data for, and other uh, bits and bobs, you select, uh, you just give a few seed keywords and Google will generate a list for you. It could be thousands, it mm -hmm. could be hundreds, depending on the relevance and popularity of the keywords. Sure. Obviously, the higher the demand is of the any product or service, um, the, the, the more number of keywords it's going to generate. This is because, use, as I said, user searches for same thing in multiple different ways. And from that list, once you generate that list, that list gives you an idea how many number of people on an average searching for that keyword and uh, estimated bids and other information. So from that list, you can generate a good amount of keywords you want to target to start with and uh, always make sure that you're going after keywords which are quite high in demand because the, because the smaller demand keywords 
if it shows like five or ten average monthly searches, there's no point because people are not going to look for that unless you really want to be testing this stuff. So there's no right and wrong here, whatever you feel comfortable with, but general practice is to go with higher um, volume keywords. Thank you, Tom. Um, so next step in the journey is uh, creating ad copy. So ad copy, I'm particularly a big fan of because uh, as I said, ad copy is the only element of your PPC campaign where user is going to interact with and the space given is very small it's a very precious space and you and a lot of people are fighting for that space so you want to make sure that you want to maximize the space you have given by your ad copy and how you do that uh, you want to give as many possible up to 15 headlines while you're writing an RSA and uh, as many possible descriptions and all of the other other extensions as well all these things space uh, in the ad copy description and other information which you've been giving which you give in the ad copy is always benefit is all for your benefit google has given this space to make make sure you maximize the space which is given to you so but the fundamental remains the same that your ad copy should be relevant which means that it should be relevant to the search query what the user is searching for i.e your keyword it should be relevant to the landing page a user is going to land on it should follow the right grammar it should, it should unfortunately um, in the world of texting or social media words like lol and this kind of stuff is not allowed google doesn't really like this kind of stuff and and so as as customers so you want to have really um really um um professional language correct grammar and punctuation and the right tone you make sure the tone is matching with with your brand with the tone of your brand and uh, also the relevance and obviously the relevance of the user is searching for and google doesn't like excessive use of uh, punctuation marks either like for example five or six exclamatory marks no. google is not a big fan of this kind of stuff so they allow most of the punctuation marks but they do not allow excessive use of any of them humanness yeah exactly um, second is ad extension so ad extensions are quite interesting um, because google absolutely appreciates that uh, the space which they are giving to uh, an advertiser for the ad is very small and in order f an advertiser usually would have a lot more information to communicate to their user uh, which is then just the space they have for that copy and that's the reason google came up with extensions so extensions there are multiple type of extensions depending uh, what you want to do but uh, make sure you use all the extensions relevant and as many as possible but as many as possible doesn't mean you add hundreds of extensions but uh, don't have one or two good practices having up to five or seven something like that i think we show them a little bit yes we had yeah, yeah we had an ad we had an example of for our own copy where we had four extensions listed even though if you add eight extensions google will maximum show four at a time or sometimes six depending but main, main practically is mainly four so yeah, make sure that you give all of them. And again, the same principle being followed, right grammar, right punctuation marks, and good tone and, and other stuff. Um, then next step is that you have to define your target audience. So, and demographics, location, interest. So obviously for an advertiser based in the UK, you do not want to show that to somebody based in, someone based in Australia unless you offer your product or services to that audience so there are settings within campaign settings you select the right uh, location the time of the day you want to uh, time of the day or week you want to run your ads for uh, the location as i said interest that if you want to target any particular audiences which are interested for example any particular activity let's say if you're selling uh, ski products yeah so in ski products you mainly want to advertise in um, in winter season and uh, you don't want to advertise the ski products users based in africa there's no point. Yeah. You want to do it only where there's, there's a snow. So, and and usually the skiing is a hobby for younger people. So you want to primarily target uh, or emphasize on younger audiences. I'm not generalizing here. Apologies if I <laughs> somehow feel like no, it, I'm... but it's based on based on generally. Obviously, I don't think any 80, 90 year old person would be going skiing. But you never know. But but generally, it's it's a hobby pursued by younger people. So you want to target your demographics according to that. There's no harm in targeting other audiences or demographics as well. But you want to make sure that you you are uh, targeting your primary or primary or primary audiences. Um, next step in the journey is landing page. So landing page is the second element a user would interact with after clicking on your ad. So first thing very very important for landing pages to have it relevant or relevance with your uh, ad copy and the keyword you targeted and the search query your user searched for 
um, and the landing page used to have a good UX. You, do, you don't want to have a landing page which take forever to load because the user will not perhaps wait that long and they will just end up leaving the site and, and your budget didn't bring you the traffic that you wanted. So landing page has to be small and really straight to the point, communicating what you're offering to the user and it has to be a good user experience or I would say excellent user experience and uh, make sure that uh, the goal you want your user to achieve coming on the landing page is clearly visible. You have motivators like call to action, the action you want them to take, for example, buy now, click here, sign up, call us, this kind of stuff, they're really effective. Uh, make sure that the user is fully motivated or given a bit extra push to take the action you want them to do. And lastly, the conversion tracking. So you, you start your advertising, you, you have a campaign set up, you, it's been generating impressions and clicks, you're bringing traffic. How would you measure that uh, how successful your campaign is? Now, for that, Google has come with conversion tracking, which means basically whatever your goal is, you track that. And uh, you can do the tracking within Google Ads or in Google Analytics. And then if you do decide to do in Google Analytics, you can import them. Uh, there is no right and wrong. You can do whichever platform you want. It's, it's, it's up to you, really, whichever you find convenient. And uh, make sure that's very, very vital for your campaign or for your account to have a correct conversion tracking setup because you do not want to under or over report your conversions because that will affect the optimization decision you're going to make. So make sure that, uh, and once you set up a conversion tracking, do a little bit of testing, maybe uh, make a purchase by yourself and see if it's tracked properly with the revenue or other metrics you want to, uh, to track. But in short, the conversion metrics should be, should be correctly set up. Now, you need to set up your conversion tracking, correct, as I said. And once the conversion tracking has been set up, uh, your campaign should be able to attribute uh, the conversions to the right campaign keyword level. So you know how your keywords, how your campaigns are performing while making the optimization. And I think we go into those in a bit more detail later as well, don't we? Yeah, yeah. we do. We yeah. do, absolutely. Different metrics. Right. So if someone has been doing PPC for a while, maybe no match types. Uh, for someone who haven't, I will tell them what they are. So, in a today's day and age, as I said, a lot of people search for the same thing from in multiple ways. There can be hundred, a thousand, if not more, ways a user can search. So, what for an, from an advertiser perspective, it is not po practically possible for them to have every keyword to be targeted or added in their ads campaign. So, what Google did, Google came up with match types, and this is a very clever way for an advertiser to target multiple um, search queries, or let's say in a common term, they're hitting multiple stones with one, sorry, mul multiple birds from one stone. Um, there are mainly three match types exist. First is broad match. And uh, as the name suggests, they're really broad. We're talking about them in, with an example because uh, um, explaining them in, in definition is probably not gonna make sense. They still don't make sense for my brain if you ask me to def to, def to define them, but um, with example, it's easier to understand. So broad match, as the name suggests, is really broad. So let's say in an example, if, if an advertiser is targeting you running shoes for uh, on broad match, uh, they could trigger ads to uh, terms like tennis shoes for men, shoes for running, and uh, other shoes-related terms. Because the broad match, how it works is that uh, if any of the keywords in any order away, present in user search query, your ad will trigger. Now, this is, as an address, you might think, oh, wow, that's excellent. If I offer, let's say, mobile phone, I just said mobile phone, it will cover iPhone, Android, everything. Yes, it would, but there's a risk as well. The risk is uh, backfiring. Because of the nature of the broad match, it matches to a lot of terms, which could be irrelevant, and it could eat up your budget very quickly. So if you do use broad match, you want to be really careful. You want to really make sure that you're targeting very relevant keywords on broad match and always make sure that the search terms which are triggering your ad or matching your keywords to with uh, are relevant phrase match so phrase match is slightly tighter than than broad match obviously uh, to avoid the risk of matching to irrelevant queries uh, google came up with phrase match now phrase match is how it works is that if you ha have a keyword let's say here running shoes on a phrase match it will trigger two search terms or queries which has got running shoes in the same order, but can have words before or after it. So let's hear an example. We said men's running shoes or best shoes for running. Now, in this example, we can see that the running shoes are, are there, but there's their men's running shoes and best shoes for running. So what has happened now? That that uh, the search queries has become more relevant. They are they're more strict 
and and they have become more relevant. So the risk of having matching to a lot of irrelevant queries get minimized here to an extent. But please bear one thing in mind that recently, in the last few years, Google has come up with this new thing called intent match, which is basically that if they see a keyword which is uh, relevant to the search query of a user, your ad would trigger even if it doesn't follow the fundamental definition of uh, of the match type. So let's say case of example here in the second example of running shoes, I said earlier that your your keyword is present in a user's query in the same order. But in the second example here, we can say best shoes for running. Now, running shoes are not coming up in the same order in the user's search query, and there's another word for between shoes and running, and it's still triggering the ad. That's primarily because of intent match. Google absolutely understands that uh, if you are a tar targeting running shoes, you are selling running shoes, and if somebody is searching best shoes for running, they want to buy running shoes. So be based on that intent match, Google triggers the ad. And intent match is really useful. Uh, it, it matches to a lot of terms, uh, which um, even goes beyond the further defini uh, main definition of match types. But uh, again, you gotta be careful because there's always a scope bit of backfiring or in terms of adding or matching to irrelevant terms. So you want to make sure that uh, you stay on top of your negative keywords. And lastly, exact match. As the name suggests, exact match is really tight. It only matches to keywords or search terms which are exactly matching to your, your keyword. Now, when I say exactly matching, it also includes singular, plural, abbreviations, and close singular, plural, uh, close match, which is again intent match, and uh, synonyms. So it, it is a little bit of wiggle room there. But uh, running shoes here, an exact match, will not match to, um, to terms like running shoes for men or best shoes for men or, or training tennis shoes for men because that's, uh, that does not match the definition of exact match. So in exact match, it will match to triggers to terms like running shoes or running trainers because we know that Google knows absolutely that uh, trainers are referred as shoes as well. Therefore, they would match based on that, but they will not have anything before or after it or in between. So it's very, very, uh, again, tighter way to target your keywords. So as an advertiser, when you are setting up your campaign, selecting your keywords, make sure you use the right match types. Um, there is no right and wrong which match type you go with, but please understand how the match types works and intent match and based on that, uh, select your match types. It's very, very important because it can always take a lot of budget very quickly. Just um, touching on a point there, you said about negative keywords. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't got them on this slide. So negative keywords being you can say if the if the search term contains this word, then I don't want my ad to show. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, so so negative keywords basically are those search terms where on which you do not want to your ad to trigger on. So let's say you're selling running shoes and somebody such as free running shoes, you put free as negative, your ad will not trigger. So it will stop from anybody searching free sh running shoes would not show your ad, so it will save you budget. So so there is a way to save your budget, but you have to make sure that with the right combination of right match type of positive keywords and right uh, negative keywords, you can have a very controlled and very relevant targeting of your ad copies. And hence I said that when you start the campaign, um, in the beginning, give a bit more budget, more, bu more budget for it to collect the data, and then based on the data, you make these optimizations. SQR or negative keywords are really, really important. Make sure you look at them categorically, periodical basis, because um, they can be search terms you can creep in and can, can eat a lot of your budget. So yeah, one thing I want to quickly sorry Tom, one thing I want to quickly point out here that a lot of people feel that um, running PPC is driving on cruise control. It is actually not cruise control. You have to actively look after your campaigns, optimize them, make the changes on a regular basis. You cannot just set them up and, and, and forget and then don't look at them at all. That just doesn't work. It will just um, not going to be effective at all. Cool. Right, so RSAs. We talked about RSAs multiple times and we're going to talk about them in more detail now. So RSAs, as earlier we last, stands for responsive search ads. Now, the people who have been doing PPC for a while may know that earlier, until a few years ago, there used to be a um, there used to be a ad type existed called uh, uh, ETAs, extended or expanded text ads. What used to happen in that is that you were allowed to give up to three headlines, two descriptions, and site links. But now, with the involvement of AI and other automated stuff, Google has come up with responsive search ads. Responsive search ads is basically you give up to 15 headlines and four descriptions along with other information, which is same as, as ETA, uh, to Google. And Google will show multiple combinations uh, to a user 
or different users uh, to identify the winning combination. Now, it's a very powerful way, Will, to understand, uh, to get very, uh, very precious clicks from the user because Google understands up to an extent what sort of advertise, what sort of content uh, a user is clicking on or interacting with. So they will show that winning combination to to the to the user, and the likelihood based on the search is that uh, the users will uh, click on your ad. The likelihood is very high, and when they click on it, they most likely will uh, engage with your brand and uh, hopefully convert. So again, the same fundamentals. You can up to give 15 headlines. Please give as many as possible, up to 15. There could be scenarios where you can't give 15 because you don't have much to say. Please aim for five or six if possible. And um, and for descriptions, up to four. Again, the same thing. Please write at least two or three if possible. Uh, ideally, you want four. And uh, again, um, same fundamentals followed. Write grammar, write punctuation. No, uh, no any, you are not allowed to use any word, as far as I'm aware, which is not in the Oxford Dictionary. So if, if you're not sure, you can always check in the Oxford Dictionary. And if it's in, not in there, then you're probably not allowed. You can try your luck. It may get approved. But but from a user's perspective, that doesn't look very professional. So you don't want to use that anyway. It depends, and, I guess if you're, it depends, it depends what you're selling, I suppose, if you're trying to, if it's a, a slang word or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what their policy is on slang. Exactly. You can, you, can, you can try your luck. If you really want to go ahead, you can try your luck. And if it gets approved in Google, um, testing or checking when they when they check your ad it's fine if you if that's what you're comfortable with if you that's what you believe your your audience is most likely to interact with but um, but yeah but make sure that um, still not slang words like like swear words that's just not good um and um, variations so the giving 15 headlines four descriptions will generate a lot of combinations or variations for of your ad you can even see what combination google shows once the data start getting collected and uh, this is again multiple way another great way to give multiple uh, ads to to different ad audiences to interact to find out which one they interact with um, usps so again you want to have uh, your USPs in the ad copies make sure that if you for example offer free services 24 7 customer support and uh, international services whatever your USP of your brand is or product is make sure you include that in the ad copy because uh, that's what the user is looking for you have to think from users perspective and offer them the value that justifies why they should buy the product or service from your brand over your competitor this is a very strong uh, way to uh, to win over your competition um, user intent again um, user intent so you need to um, make sure that uh, the ad is matching the intent of the user what they're looking for and periodically update your ad copies every few months if possible or maybe earlier if possible if you've got a huge account which has got a lot of interaction so you want to update your ad copies frequently just don't run boring ad co or same ad copy which gets boring eventually again and again make sure you keep periodically update them and let's say if you're coming up with an offer for black friday or anything like that christmas then uh, make sure that you highlight that in your ad copy include the new ad copy that you have an offer running because offer is a very great strong um, way to to get user clicks and get interacted uh, with your brand yeah I was sorry. I was just saying we we were running a little bit later than we would normally um, through practice. So it's just, apologies. We, we've only uh, got we've only got a couple more to go after this. It's just um, yeah. it's, it, we're near in the end. But if you have got any questions in the meantime, please do uh, please do put it in the chat. Yeah, I'll try to be quick. No, yeah, sorry, I got okay. a bit carried away. It's, <laughs> That's it's, my fault. I keep interrupting yeah. you. It's it's it's. I love uh, doing PPC and talking about it. So yeah. Um, yeah, and lastly, uh, CTA. So CTA, again, call to action, the action you want your user to take. So it could be shop now, get a quote, learn more, contact us, fill the form, whatever it is for your business, but make sure the CTA is there because sometimes users believe that, okay, I read that, what do you want me to do? So you want to make sure that you are communicating the step, the next step you want them to take by adding a call to action in your ad copy. And again, the, have make sure the, ad copy, the call to action is on a landing page as well, as I previously mentioned. Thank you, Tom. So ad extensions, um, in this example, again, the same example, ad extensions are a very powerful way to communicate extra information, which is perhaps not as highly relevant for the ad copy, but still relevant for your business and other information you want uh, to communicate to your to your user. And there are multiple type of ad extensions. There are, I think, seven or eight in total. They keep on changing, but something like that. But um, a lot of them are uh, one of the most common one is site link now site link is is a very uh, effective way to direct your users to any particular page so site link is basically lists a few bunch of uh, links uh, with headline and description uh, 
under the ad copy and if a user wants to directly go on that page they can directly click on the site link and land on that page rather than going to your home page or the page and then eventually navigating to it and it's a great way to make the whole user experience quicker everyone wants to get things done with quicker as quick as possible with least possible effort and it's a great way to um, to make sure that uh, user is able to do that call out so it's it's um, it's a small little text that has highlighted uh, in the picture so it's basically um, small benefits um, unique selling points you want to give to user for example in our case uh, we have got like reliable performance new domain extension migra migrations in your case if it's like as i said 24 7 customer support or uh, international customer support or free quotation or anything like that whatever you think is a usp of your business which was not strong enough to be in the in the lead ad copy in the, in the main ad copy you can add them here they are again a very good way to communicate please bear in mind as i previously said all the extensions are not visible all the time or shown all the time but as an advertiser it's a good practice to add them because they do get shown and make a difference and lastly structure snippet so this is basically uh, showing specific aspects of your product like for example categories brands so if you're selling let's say shoes then you can say you in the in the in the structure snippet nike adidas reebok etc whatever brands you sell the shoes of it just if a user is looking for example particularly any particular brand of for shoes they, they see the name of the brand and the likelihood for them to click on that is very high because you are offering what they're looking for again the whole point is about the relevance you want to make sure that is relevant uh, to the user And lastly, measuring Last success. So we talked about conversion tracking earlier, but uh, Google ad campaigns would have a has a lot of matrices. And uh, the matrices, every matrices, every metric has a meaning. But as an advertiser, you need to identify which matrices are key for you and then build your report accordingly. General practice, these matrices, what we have listed here, are the ones which are most common. We go through them in a minute. But... Uh, you have to make sure that you select the matrices or look at the matrices which are relevant for your campaign or for your business. So first is impression share. So impression share is basically just a percentage of times your ad has appeared. It gives you an understanding of how much the size of the market is. So let's say in an example, if your impression share is 50%, that means there's still 50% of the potential for your ad to go further. This, you're only showing ad to the 50% of the audiences, you still have got 50% left. So there's a huge potential for you to go after it. It makes you understand the size of the market. CTR or click-through rate is basically a percentage of how of the percentage of users who are seeing your ad and then clicking on it. From a, from a user's from a, a resident's perspective, you want CTR to be as high as possible. But um, in practical terms, I would say anything above five is very good. So make sure that um, that um, you're aiming for that number. But if you do achieve five percent, doesn't mean that you get complacent. You have to make sure that um, you are always pushing the boundaries. That's the whole thing about PPC. Always trying to push the boundaries to make it more effective. CPC, CPC is average cost per click. You're paying for the per, per click. Now, please bear in mind, as Will earlier asked a question about hundred pounds. I give you a bit more example ex information here. So. As per the new rules or current rules of Google, if you have a maximum bid of hundred pounds, mm -hmm. you can pay up to double of oh, that. Okay, nice. So if, yeah, so it, so if if you it is cost <laughs> cost a bit scary, it does. But that's why the setting of bidding is very very uh, bids bids is very critical that you want to do it what the right amount you're comfortable with. But uh, in in um, yeah, so you can spend up to double, but that doesn't mean you will always spend double. As I earlier said, you will only spend one p more than your nearest competitor, and every cost every every click will not cost you the same it could be it could vary depending on the competition for that particular auction but google gives you a metric which is cpc which is average cost per click you're paying so so you get an idea what you're paying now quality score this is one of my favorite matrices so quality score is basically it's a virtual number uh, which assigned to your keywords to to tell you how good they are and um, the quality score is assigned from 0 to 10 now higher the quality score the higher the relevance is and the reason quality score is very important because having a higher quality score, you can beat your competitors higher bid. Now, how it works, let me explain. So, so your ad listing is determined by ad rank, which is a result of quality score multiplied by your bid. Mm -hmm. Now, if your quality score is higher, you do not need to have as much high bid 
to beat your com 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 competitor. Apologies there. Yeah, so beat your competition. So you want to make sure that the higher the quality score, the, the, in theory, the lower your CPC is going to be. So you always want to make sure that you have the highest possible uh, quality score, aim for 10 if you can achieve it. And um, and then it will save you money in long term, a lot of money. Um, conversion rate. Now, conversion rate is, um, again, a, a percentage of people who are converting or taking the goal you want them to goal after coming after coming in a website or click on your ad uh, out of people who are clicking so percentage of people who are converting or taking the the goal you want from the ones who are clicking and then return on return on ad spend now this return on ad spend is relevant for e-commerce campaigns the uh, it could be search or shopping depends uh, doesn't matter uh, but um, it's basically how much money or revenue your campaign is generating uh, from 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 the cost. So there is a term in business called ROI, which is return on investment. But Google has come up with their own term called return on ad investment, ad spend, which is basically that how much revenue you're generating by the cost you're putting in. And it's simply calculated by dividing your revenue by the cost, and then you know your ROS. ROS. Now, as an advertiser, when you start a campaign. Make sure you have your ROAS uh, target benchmarked. You know how much ROAS you want your campaigns to achieve. And then based on that ROAS target, optimize accordingly. So, But your ROAS has to be realistic. You can't have ROAS of 100, 500. That's not going to work out. It has to be realistic. So you have to maybe go back to drawing board and uh, and do some maths to come up with your relevant, draw your, um, your relevant and uh, realistic ROAS target and then... Uh, and try to achieve that ROAS target. But if you achieve that ROAS target, it doesn't mean you stop there. You always push again higher and higher to just achieve them, get the more value out of your PPC campaigns. And I think uh, that's it. This is it. That's it. That's so, it. any questions? questions? So, yeah, we're sticking around now for a minute. Um, so, if you've got any questions, please do use the Google chat function um, and we'll see them. Like, say, this. Is there is a little bit of a delay, so if I, as much as I see your questions in real time, you won't see us responding um, for about yeah, about thirty seconds or so, I'd say. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask any questions, um, and we will endeavour to answer them. Um, I don't think anyone's asked anything just yet, but yeah, we're here for a bit. If anyone wants to ask yep. any questions, we'll shut the stream down if no one's got any. But I'll give it a minute or two. Yep. Um, and this is always the fun. So I guess we're, we're, while we're uh, while we're waiting to see if there's any questions, um, high, have you, what's the highest bid you've ever seen for anything? Um, 240 pounds. Oh, well, what was that for? That was in insurance. Uh, okay. Finance products are very expensive. Insurance is one of them. Yeah, so that's that 240, something around 240 pounds if, if my memory is serving me right. But it was ridiculously expensive. That is expensive. So you, like, I guess the theory there is that they'll take it out and never then and then don't churn. So it's like longer lifetime revenue, right? Exactly. You have to work on the averages because um, you every every user will click on your, will, who will click on your ad will not convert. So you have to work on the averages. Yeah. How many are clicking? How many are converting? And then work on your metrics. And hence, as I said, ROAS is very important. And for advertisers who will be running for lead. For them, is CPL or CPA that the target becomes very critical. That you want up, what amount you want to pay uh, to achieve a lead or to get a lead in your business. Therefore, the conversion tracking then again becomes yeah. critical. That you need to track those conversions for you to be able to identify the number and then uh, optimize accordingly. Okay. Any any good mistakes you've seen in your uh, in your time? Uh, there has been I've seen some examples where. Um, Bad grammar. Okay. People have tried putting emojis in the head. I have seen. Emojis. Yeah. You... But then that depends on who you're selling to, right? Because exactly. Like, so, yeah, it depends. My exactly. kids love emojis. So yeah. If you're trying to sell to them, just yeah. basically put emojis, you'll sell them anything you want. Exactly. So it depends on target audience. But but I think for a short time, Google allowed emojis, but then yeah. they stopped. Okay. <laughs> because um, there's always a risk of having, um, <laughs> having a double meaning <laughs> emojis like you don't want to have an aubergine and this kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so people always try to push the boundaries. Yeah, fair enough. I can just imagine what the search results page would look like. Yeah, that would be just <laughs> like... Uh, yeah, I imagine that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any, any, any times where someone's like accidentally spent all their budget because they messed up? Or yeah, that, that happens a lot. Horror stories. These are always fun, right? Yeah, they all happens a lot, especially in the days of manual bidding. 
people would put 10 pounds, they put pounds they put hundred pounds without realizing oh, nice. but having one small typo this decimal could be a problem if you want to play 125 you put 12.5 always a risk the budget as well mm -hmm. uh, there's always a risk of typo so therefore uh, you want to be really careful when you're doing stuff and an automated bidding has minimized that up quite a bit that yeah, you don't need to do that. any of that you just make sure that your target setup is correct and google does it for you but yeah but th that happens um i remember um uh, reading a case study online or just um, the PPC um, community talks on the internet as everyone else does. And uh, the guy said, I just started a new role and uh, I paid a mistake and I spent the advertiser's whole budget of the month in an hour. No. And, oh, no. Uh, what do I do now? <laughs> I hope he made some sales out of it. At least. Well, yeah, he didn't mention that, but he did <laughs> he, say that. If he hit the sales for the month in one day, then you go, okay, exactly. right? And the most funny comment, which I remember the is, oh, is particularly right. is that the one guy, one person said, so write your resignation and leave. <laughs> oh. Oh. I hope he didn't have to do that. No, that's, yeah. that's not ideal, especially as a new role. A yeah, whole so month's worth of budget. Within an hour. So Jeez. this is what risky it is. Bro. Yeah, you can backfire so quickly. Sure, like right. You can spend your money oh. within seconds and uh, and you have to just make sure that you whatever you do, you are doing it very carefully and looking, looking after, checking what you have done. No, no. Small mistakes don't realize sometimes. No, no, it's easy to slip up, right? If you're not looking at it, or if you're just looking at it once a day or whatever, and you're just like, hang on, where's all my money going? <laughs> it's just like, it's, yeah, it's not good. All right, we've had no questions in the time we've just been chatting rubbish, so I think we'll call it a day there. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming along. I uh, appreciate the uh, the viewership, and hopefully it was helpful. Um, and yeah, next month we're doing custom. Oh, this is my one. This is my this is expertise yours. area, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we're doing customer journey mapping. So having a look at um, how you can have a, a look at how your customers engage with your real site or any journeys you want to send them on. Um, but yeah, that'll be around mid-December, probably a little bit early on because that's something's happening in December. Towards the end? Oh, something where no one does any work for probably the last two weeks right so it'll probably be more like the 10th ish i guess somewhere around there um but yeah that'd be fun i think that'd be quite fun i'm looking forward to doing that one actually uh something i actually know something about so there we go it's a it's a very very small subset of everything you get so smart on stream yeah <laughs> or make myself look more stupid i think knows either way but yeah that'll probably be sort of mid-december time so yeah come along and um we'll see you then thanks thanks for coming and thank you thank you tom and i'm anorak for, for for the stream appreciate it it's been a pleasure mate love talking about ppc so it's been a pleasure good to hear thank you guys bye bye